Hello everyone, today we are going to learn how to um, draw a chair conformer and also figure out how to do those axial and equatorial hydrogens in the right positions that need to be drawn for future problem solving. And we're also going to talk about diaxial and gauche, okay? So the first thing I want to show you is the steps how to draw the chair itself, okay? So if you're like me, you have a hard time drawing this, um, just follow the steps every time and I promise you, you'll always get it right. So this is what you do to draw. Put those two lines and the dot in the middle and there you go. Okay, and the next thing I want to show you is how to draw axial hydrogens because they're easy. All you gotta do is point them straight into the air. That's it. So one up. Oh, and I forgot to mention, just to make sure that this is carbon one, this is carbon two, three, four, five, six. Because um, remember, this is uh, cyclohexane. Cyclo, yeah, cyclohexane. So, so let's do this down, right? And then up. Just go into that order. It doesn't matter which carbon you draw first. Just go up, down, up, down. Okay. There you go. These are your axle positions. Okay. So the next thing I want you to do, or even imagine, you don't have to do it every time, is pretty much cut this in half. Okay. And then, so we know that this is our right side and this is left. Okay, so the next thing you do when you draw your equatorial hydrogens, um, for example, in carbon number one, it's not going to be pointing the same direction as axial position. It's going to be the opposite. So up, the opposite of up is down. But at the same time, it's going to point down and left because it's on this side, right? So we're going to do this. So for carbon two, it's going to be up, but it's going to point right. So like that. And number three, because it's on the right side, it's going to be down and right. Up, right. For five is going to be on the left side. So down, left. Six, up and left. So that's how you need, that's what you need to go through when you're drawing this so that there is no confusion when you're trying to um, answer those tricky questions, which I'm going to do in the next video. All right. So this is how you do this. Let's do one more time just so you can get a hang of it. Okay. These two lines like this, put a dot in the middle, like, and try to make it like up or down. So like this. Okay, and let's do our axial position. We said that it goes straight, right? I always draw this the same way so that I don't give myself um, space to make any mistakes, right? So you're going to get a hang of this afterwards. Like you're going to be able to do this right away. Okay, so we numbered these carbons just for the sake of... Um, learning here all right um so the next thing i want to talk about is that let's say that we have a ch3 here okay ch3 if you put ch3 on axial position um the h the hydrogens from the CH3, it's going to have um, something called diaxial interactions. And diaxial interactions is caused by those hydrogens. So this is a hydrogen, right? This is also a hydrogen. There's not enough space there for them. So it causes steric strain from the diaxial interaction. So I'm going to write this is dia. Every time you see like a bulky um, 
let's say a bulky like a substituent and it's on axle position you need to know that it's going to have this diaxal interaction which causes um steric strain okay okay so and let's say we have and these diaxal interactions come in twos so how many uh, diaxal interaction we have in here it's two okay so if we have ch3 here and tell me which hydrogens are going to have you're going to just look at the ones that are in axial position okay so this is another diaxial position so if i asked you how many diaxial position how many diaxial interactions are in this you're going to tell me four because there's two here because they come in twos and two here that's going to be four okay just keep that in mind those questions tend to come up too and the next thing i want to cover is the gauche okay so let's say we have ch3 here all right on equatorial you see this is down okay and then another ch3 here on equatorial okay on adjacent carbon this is gauche all right gauche has to happen on adjacent carbons okay adjacent carbon if their positions if two um bulky substituents are on gauche and they are gauche they're going to be on equatorial and equatorial positions then it's gauche you need to recognize that as gauche sometimes let's draw another hold on let's go this way let's see another one and gauche cannot happen diaxially okay no diaxal gauche because we already have diaxal interaction um let's draw another one here to give you another example so the gauche okay so we can also let's see we have ch3 here okay that's on axle and then another ch3 here that's on equatorial so this is also gauche it can also happen axial and equatorial not both axial position okay so that's also gauche all right and okay so i think this is it for what you need to know how to draw it and where those positions are and one more thing i want to let you know is that gauche is much more stable than diaxo diaxo is like the worst thing you can do any bulky substituent that you're gonna get you want to put it always put it in equatorial position now it doesn't matter if it's like this exact position no as long as it's on some equatorial position you want those there because it is um, less steric strain therefore there is more stability all right so look out for the next video please subscribe to my channel i'm going to be doing actually um more problems with these just so you can get a hang of it all right happy learning